So number 16 is a challenging one. Um, we are asked, <clears throat> again, to uh, use analytic methods to find the extreme values of the function on the interval and where they occur. Now, we have an interval, but notice that the interval has no endpoints. So normally when you're looking at um, finding extreme values of a function on an interval, you want to think critical points, endpoints, right? But we have no endpoints. So usually we're going to think about critical points and endpoints. But in this case, we have no endpoints because the interval is open. All right, so now we're just left with critical points. So um, we know that g of x equals secant x. So to find the critical points, we need g prime of x, which is um, secant tangent. So now the problem is, <clears throat> how am I going to identify the um, points where g prime is 0 and the points where uh, g prime is undefined? <clears throat> it would be easier if I could see this as a fraction. Could I write this as a fraction? Sure. It's 1 over cosine times sine over cosine, which is sine of x over cosine squared x. Right? That's what g prime of x is. So I just wrote it like you can rewrite things how you want. By rewriting it this way, now I can find where g prime of x equals 0 and where g prime of x is undefined by just setting the numerator equal to 0 and the denominator equal to 0. And there are other ways to do this, and we're just trying to uh, keep coming back to the same kind of a layout. All right, so for to do my numerator equals 0, I'm going to say sine of x equals 0. Um, now... I might have to think about, you know, how am I going to know sine of x is 0 within this interval? So, you know, if I think about the unit circle as I should, negative pi over 2 is down here, right? That's negative pi over 2. And then we're going all the way around to positive 3 pi over 2, which is also down here. They are coterminal angles. So we're doing everything from negative pi over 2 around to 3 pi over 2. And the question is, where is the sine equal to 0 on that interval? The sine is the y-coordinate. So the two places where the y-coordinate is 0 are here and here. That is 0 and pi. All right? We're not going to call this 2 pi because that would be more than 3 pi over 2. It would not be in this interval. All right. So that means that this has two solutions, x equals 0 and x equals pi. All right. Now let's look at where the denominator is um, 0. So, for the denominator, I have cosine squared x. Now, by the way, you can look ahead here and say, hmm, the denominator here is cosine, and our original function is secant, which is 1 over cosine. So, if cosine, of, if cosine squared of x is 0, then cosine of x is going to be 0. Therefore, any non-differentiable points will also not be in the domain of the function. So, I could just observe that and skip this part. Right? You can do that. So, but let's let's say I didn't notice that. What if I didn't notice that? Then I would say, okay, what happens when cosine squared x equals zero? That's my denominator equals zero. Well, I'll just take square root of both sides and then cosine x equals zero. And then I can look at the unit circle again and say, all right, where is the cosine equal to zero? Again, on that open interval from negative pi over two, wrapping around to positive 3 pi over 2, but not including either of those uh, endpoints. All right, so where is the cosine equal to 0? We're not including negative pi over 2 and pi over 2, so the only place where the cosine is 0 within this open interval is pi over 2. So x equals pi over 2. All right, but then we're going to say, all right, but you know what? If I put pi over 2 back into the original function, what I get is undefined. Um, so because secant of pi over 6 is undefined, sorry, secant of pi over 2 is undefined um, because it's 1 over cosine of pi over 2, so it's 1 over 0. All right, therefore this is not in domain. So I want to observe that that is not in the domain of g, right? I have to say of g. Right? We already know it's not in the domain of g prime. That's why this is a non-differential point. That's why it's a critical point. But it's also not in the domain of g. So we can't say it's a critical point of g because it's not a point of g at all. All right, so now here's what I have. Two critical points, x equals 0 and x equals pi. Now what I'm left with doing is determining if these points are minima or maxima or neither one. All right, so let's take them one at a time. We're going to do first derivative test on x equals 0. 
So we'll consider x less than zero and x greater than zero. And um, let's see, our uh, second derivative, let, or our first derivative, let's, let's keep our g prime of x as being um, sine x over cosine squared x because it'll make it easier to analyze the signs. All right, so if sine is less than zero, but you wanna remember when we're looking at less than zero, we mean really just to the left of zero. So if I'm looking at, um, let's say I look at sine x in terms of its graph, right? So I'm not gonna look way over here where sine of x is positive. I'm gonna go just to the left because I wanna know if at this point, the um, g prime is changing from negative to positive or positive to negative or not. All right, well, I see that when x is less than zero, sine of x just to the left of zero is negative. Cosine squared, we like that because it's always positive. All right, so that means that um, when x is less than zero, g prime of x is a negative divided by positive, so it's negative. All right, what about when x is to the right of zero? Then uh, g prime of x is still equal to sine x over cosine squared x. So now let's do a sine analysis on that. So when x is slightly greater than zero, sine of x is positive, so that's positive. Cosine squared is always positive, so g prime of x is positive. All right, so now we know that um, g of x has a what? A min at x equals zero because g prime changes from negative to positive there. All right, that's just... Uh, at x equals zero. What about the other critical point where x equals pi? Okay, so now let's do the first derivative test on x equals pi. So that one's going to set up with x less than pi and x greater than pi. You should see if you can finish this one out and uh, I'll, I'll save it for my next video.